America's dairy farmers are a shining example of the productivity of U.S. agriculture. The National Milk Producers Federation says the U.S. herd yields 30 billion pounds of milk over and above what U.S. consumers can consume annually. Now, this ever-increasing amount of product has the potential to depress prices. Under previous farm bills, dairy producers were nearly guaranteed automatic subsidy payments in lean times. That was until 2014 when the new farm bill introduced policies to wean producers off government payments. Market to Market's Colleen Kranz reports. In 2009, dairies like Iowa-based Yarrabee Farms were losing as much as $500 per cow. Subsidies paid through the government's former dairy program, Milk Income Loss Contract, helped many farms survive the year. Most years, 100% of eligible dairy farms would receive a payment of some kind. As of 2015, however, a new program, the Margin Protection Program, was in place. And new data shows how dramatic the shift has been. Just 1%, or about 250 of the nearly 25,000 U.S. dairy farms enrolled in MPP in 2015, received anything back from the government's insurance-style program. The days of the government giving us money to milk cows is over. 54% of the nation's nearly 44,000 licensed dairy farms did enroll in MPP for 2016, the program's second year. However, farmers are required to continue in the program through at least 2018 once they've enrolled. And the percentage of dairy farms choosing to pay premiums for the margin protection program's higher levels of coverage has dropped significantly from 56% in 2015 to 22% in 2016. I think people thought, okay, well, uh, for the first time in 40 years, the government hasn't sent me a check in the fall, so maybe we just shouldn't partake in this program. Most instead paid only a $100 administrative fee for a minimal so-called catastrophic protection. MPP provides financial assistance to farmers only when the difference between the price of milk and the price of feed falls below a certain dollar amount. Enrolled dairy farmers are automatically covered at a minimum $4 margin, which is considered a catastrophic loss level. Producers can choose to pay higher premiums to protect a greater percentage of their income. In 2015, milk prices slid downward, but feed prices also declined canceling out any advantage the program might have provided for the majority of producers. Our experience in the first year of it was such that people who bought up coverage, paid a little bit of premium for buy-up coverage, um, found that didn't, they didn't hit those levels of margin. And so what we saw this year uh, for 2016 is a similar level of involvement, participation in the program, but more people are in it at the basic catastrophic coverage level. According to USDA, dairy producers paid the government nearly $73 million in MPP fees and premiums last year, while only $685,000 was paid out. That's a glass half full, half empty story. You don't want it to drop to the level that you're going to collect payments because that means that you lost money on a lot of the milk you produced. Some industry leaders point out that the program should not be judged in a one-year period. Others, like Dane Lang, suspect many milk producers are finding other strategies for weathering potential price shifts after receiving little or nothing from the program last year. Lang, a fourth-generation dairy producer, said he enrolled at a premium margin level of $6.50 in 2015. This year, Yarrabee Farms chose to instead use forward contracting through its dairy cooperative to manage risk. This year, we participated in the government program so that our production records are in the program and we can stay in the program, but we were able to purchase what we think of as a much better margin and a much better value to us through the market. Lang says some dairy farms produce too little milk to enter into most private sector contracts. You can't go in and say, I want to sell 100 pounds of milk on a contract. Nobody does that. You have to be able to sell, at least with our cooperative, contracts are made in 200,000 pound increments. For those smaller dairies, MPP may provide the only option for help during the most difficult years. 
Lang also believes programs like MPP force farmers to balance their books with less help from the government and might shorten tough times in the dairy industry. I think people have to make quicker decisions now and they have to make more realistic decisions because that government handout's not there anymore. And I think in 2009, if the government program had been such as it is now, maybe it would have been a six month crash in milk price rather than a 12 month uh, disaster. If MPP had been in place between 2009 and 2014, government officials calculated it would have paid out more than it took in during three of the six years. In order to determine payments to producers, the program incorporates national numbers for feed and milk prices. As a result, dairy farms in Midwestern or other states that produce large amounts of corn, soybeans, and alfalfa have a financial advantage over states like California, where feed is more likely to be shipped in from greater distances. I will agree that having a national index, which is what you have to have in a program like this, does have different impacts in different parts of the country. Mulhern says the government's feed prices offered a reliable starting point, but farmers need that cost estimate only to run their own calculations on what level of government-run coverage, if any, is most logical. Although fewer dairy farms dot the countryside than in past decades, those still operating continue to hit record levels of production. In 2015, all U.S. dairies produced 209 billion pounds of milk, up 1.3% from the year before. Mulhern says that with large supplies, the next battle plan should focus on increasing exports to prevent prices from sliding. Dairy industry exports have grown from less than $1 billion in 2000 to a record $7.2 billion in 2014, before dropping again in 2015 to $5.3 billion. As the margin protection program matures, dairy farmers will continue to watch, waiting to see if any advantage emerges or if more farmers shy away from the government's insurance-style program. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.